Welcome to our discussions on transformation and the meaning of life as they are presented by Morris Nicole in the psychological commentaries to the teachings of Gurdjieff and Uspensky. Amazing! Today, we will be looking at one of the most profound topics in almost every strand of philosophy or religion, the meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? Is there any meaning to life? Let's find out what Nicole has to say about the matter in connection to the system of the fourth way. Nicole, are you there? Can you shed some light on the question regarding the meaning of life? I sure can. To have some meaning in life is crucial for our survival. A man and a woman can get so tired of each other that they have no meaning for one another. A man can get so tired of his job that it has no longer any meaning for him. A person can do his daily work dutifully for years until it has no longer any meaning for him. A man may search for new adventures until they have no meaning for him and he does not know what he is doing and so on. You are so right. I can relate to that fully. But can you tell us more about what perspective the work of the fourth way has on finding meaning in life? Well, that reminds me of a conversation I had with Mr. O about aim and the possibility of recurrence. That is, living one's life again. Although, as Mr. O rightly pointed out in the fourth way, no idea of this kind can be proven, that does not mean that recurrence is not an actual possibility. So, if nothing changes in our essence, that is, in our deepest and most real part, then the recurrence of one's life, if this happens, will be identical with the life one has passed through. This means that at death, one returns to that part of time where one was born and is born into the same surroundings, etc., and lives again the same life. In fact, lives again and again the same life because nothing has changed in oneself. So from there, it might follow that meaning in life is a function of preventing from being stuck in an everlasting recurrence of the same life, but to evolve to another level of life if death is not the end of our existence. This idea of eternal recurrence is also at the root of major Asian religions, especially Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, and Sikhism. But what's the impact if you do not adhere to this worldview? Excellent question, dear. Mr. O asked me what my aim was in connection with this possibility of reliving my life, and I said, thinking of my life as far as I can remember it, I see that I took very little in. It was like a dream. It had very little meaning, and in fact whole years are blotted out in my mind. He said, yes, this is right. As a rule, we are not there. As Mr. G said of someone, he is never at home. He continued in something like the following words. And this really applies to us all. We are never at home or very rarely. We are nearly always out. So our experiences have little or no meaning for us. So, if you believe in life and nothing else, living life may become identical to living a dream. We are never at home. So, what were the main takeaways you got from this discussion? The conversation with Mr. O carried away two clear impressions. One was that to formulate your aim regarding the possibility of having to relive your life at death, and the second idea was that unless you saw the nature of life, you could not get more meaning in living it. I realized that he had answered the question I had not asked, namely, how can life have more meaning? That's not a very appealing outlook, to be honest. Indeed, Bella. When life becomes meaningless, people feel hopeless and useless. Life gives certain meanings, otherwise everyone would be unable to live or would feel that suicide were better. But the thing is that the meanings that are given by life are not permanent. Therefore, you might have noticed, mechanical man derives most of his meaning from imagination and not from reality. Imagination enhances meaning but then reality tends to exhaust it. But why is that so? I do not understand. That is very obvious, because there is no correspondence between imagination and reality. The one can never pass into the other, because they are utterly different things. It takes people a long time to see this, that imagination can never be fulfilled in reality. This firm distinction between reality and imagination sounds very platonic to me. Plato claimed that reality was nothing more than a representation, a copy, if you will, of the original ideas or eternal forms. But aren't the two intertwined? Imagination is on one plane, reality on another. However, most people get a great deal of meaning solely from imagination. Imagination feeds meaning. On the other hand, reality itself has its own meaning. A good dinner in reality is not the same as imagination and has meaning of its own. If you try to separate meaning derived from imagination and meaning derived from life, that is, from reality, speaking in the ordinary sense of the word, 
you will begin to see the great difference between these two sources of meaning. What is the stance of the work regarding this idea? The work compares mankind with people in a hall of turning mirrors. It is imagination of these mirrors that makes people believe in progress. This imagination has its roots in people's individual imagination of themselves and the entirely false meanings they derive from it. Imaginary people meet imaginary people. Imaginary people dress up to meet other imaginary people dressed up. Imaginary people converse politely with imaginary people. Imaginary people marry imaginary people. Imaginary people kill imaginary people and so on. Well, that makes me very curious to know what the work offers as an alternative to these imaginary ways of creating meaning. The meanings that the work, that is the meanings that esotericism and its unchanging concepts about man and his possible inner rebirth, can give a man belong to an order of ideas that can transform all the meanings that life gives us. That sounds interesting. What is the first step that man needs to take to derive life's meaning from the work? If a man begins to take life as work, then his whole relationship to existence begins to change because the meaning of life changes for him. He sees life not as an end, but as a means, and this enables him not to identify with life and its happenings as he formerly did. The work, it becomes his teacher, and gradually shows him how to take what happens in life so that he learns from life and all that happens in life. And in this way, life becomes his teacher and self-evolution becomes the real end where the meaning of life is connected to life and not to imagination. As a result of this new meaning, new parts of centers are touched and new connections made internally and new interpretations are possible. Man becomes a little more free, not so mechanical. Really? These new meanings reach him through the ideas of the work, an inexhaustible source of meaning, whose origin lies beyond mechanical life in the conscious circle of humanity. Thanks, Nicole, for your extensive explanation on this topic. Still, I am convinced we haven't even scratched the surface yet. So to stay in the loop of this conversation and all matters concerning personal transformation, consider subscribing to our channel or join our free online classrooms. Wicked. Thanks for watching. Yes.